Who are you doing? Nothing. Nothing? Why not? Trying to get on the Slice Out Radio website. Sounds like a cool website. Yeah, it's all right. Oh. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. The opinions expressed during this show are those of the individual participants and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of their associated organizations or Lifestyle Radio. I'm going to check everyone's in You guys right now, go ahead. There, you're on my end going. We are going, whatever. We're going. Why didn't we bring that closer to you? This? Well, because so everybody's in the shot, right? Oh, right. Yeah. It's a problem because it's too unfortunate. Is, should I get one of those lenses for that? Yeah. The, is that I a send it to you. I send it to you. I can send it to you again. Oh, you did? The wide angle one, yeah. For a camera? Yeah. For an yeah. iPhone? The moment one, yeah. It's a. It's called the moment? Yeah. The moment, the music. Hey, everybody, welcome to uh, The Higher Estate. My name is Dr. Ira Price, and we're here to talk about all things related to cannabis, bridging the gap between the medical and the recreational or lifestyle market. Um... Last week we started a oh well, I guess I should say hi to everybody. Yo, hey Tyler, you know I mean? Tyler. Tyler is still here. We, even the last week, people were texting me, being like, "Are you and Tyler in a fight?" <laughs> <laughs> That's just how we talk to each other. We're, well, uh, you were saying you're going to kick me off as co-host, but that didn't happen. Well, no, not yet. It was a joke. And then the fight almost <laughs> about the hockey thing, and which we're not going to talk hey, about. What do you guys think <laughs> about violence in hockey? Do you guys play hockey? Or, yeah. Oh, fuck what off. What level hockey do you play? <laughs> fuck off. Nah, no, shut up. Shut everybody. Get out of here. Do you play hockey or sport? Yeah. yeah. In, 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 like, a, a house league when you're, like, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. You should start hitting at 14. That's what yeah, you should start hitting. I started hitting at, like, 8, which was probably too young. That's yeah, when that's the that's chunky right. stop signs came. Everyone had to stop hitting yeah. from behind. It's yeah. a yeah. chunky stop sign. Chunky stop signs in the back of your jersey to stop from No one ever saw that. No one ever, ever saw that. It. Like, it was like a thing from Don Cherry. It's just, yeah. if you played hockey growing up, you know what it is. <laughs> oh, you guys believe in that? Man, it's because when you get run into the boards by a cheap shot, you either got to fight or you have someone who fights for you because you don't want that to happen again. Yeah. If they're in there pounding on your goalie and beating at his hands every time he covers the puck, his hands are going to be shit by the end of the game. Time to be like, see, you have to stop that. So should we all be walking around with guns? That's a completely different statement. Why is that a different statement? Because you don't die fighting in hockey. You die. You, you, have a you don't die right away. Are you having issues with kissing? Yeah. Yeah, but that's the the hissing is coming from that that cork. That the last one? one? Yeah. I was getting it from yours, Tyler. That's which one's plugged into Okay, it's okay now. Yeah, I know it's just right there. This cord is that last cord. Oh, it's yours? No, it's not. Yeah, no, it's not. No, it's that one, right? It's that one. It never was. See, Tyler, you just got to pay attention. This is because you got too many hits playing Playing hockey. hockey. (laughs) (laughs) Hail, shit. You look look like you, you look like you, like, this is the only just, and you literally need a suntan, (laughs) but whatever. That's your coffee, though, huh? It is really. Thank you, Heal. Okay, let's um, let's get back on who's here today. So Tyler, hey, then we have Jay and Jesse. Nailed it. Well, I was gonna say, <laughs> um, and uh, but these guys are awesome. They have a um, they have an awesome shop up on Concession Street in Hamilton called Heal, um, and they have Heal Wellness, and then Body. Natural. Body natural, and we're going to talk about their protein. They use uh, plant-based protein. They're looking to put, uh, well, they are infusing, well, will be infusing BD products into their uh, uh, really awesome. What looks like really awesome. Well, it's great branding, uh, and uh, looks like they're going to uh, be working in the fitness industry, in the fitness world. You guys should meet some of my friends. Um, do you know uh, Angela? What's her last name? Angelina. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad I know her name. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Bliss Edibles. Yeah, Blessed. Blessed. Between the two of us. We'll get there. Just ignore us today because, you know, it's like Tyler got on. It's synergistic. So, anyway, we've got a lot of athletes that come on all the time and we talk about it all the time. Anyway, so we're talking about protein powders. We're going to talk about nutrition and wellness and. Uh, what what they're putting into their product? Actually, I think what I'm going to talk a lot about is their is their branding and their packaging because uh, their packaging they're working on doing all biodegradable, all you know, plastic free, new, uh, re, re, 
<laughs> Which, given what the government's doing, is nice. <laughs> if you pay attention to who's anxious a little while ago, it said, like, by 2021, he wants no more plastic bags in Canada, period. Yeah, or straws. I mean, that stuff should all be gone by the dodo yeah. bird anyway. Yeah. So yeah. this is a great yeah. way to think yeah. forward. Yeah, for sure it is. So we're going to talk about that, and uh, then also, so we've got those two guys here. Say hi, hey, hey guys. guys. Hey. And then we have uh, usual fucking Lucas. I'm pissed off. I want to throw this all the changes in this swear jar today because this guy showed up 20 minutes late, and that's why we started so late. So uh, before we get started, any news? Any news today? Well, the biggest story is obviously Bruce. Nicole. What? Oh, Bruce Lee. Who resigned yeah. from As yeah. Let me see. CEO. Oh, how oh, weird are you talking about? The Cole, what? He's, he was the co CEO. It was him oh. and the other guy who now is the CEO. Mm. But and if, I, if you actually read in the uh, large distributing company, um, who's mainly, it's, what is it? I can never say it right. It's Mexican, it starts with kind of like Mal, Malbo, Malbo, M A L B O. It's, it's a little short thing. It's named the silver thing or silver and label. You don't know what are you talking about? Not Marble, that's cigarettes, but it's Marble or something. It's a <laughs> many square. <laughs> just gotta throw stuff but basically, they own about 40% of Canada. And they're very upset with their revenue. Oh, here. And they came out with that story as well today as soon as our CEO stepped out. Is it not working at all? Just need my cutting so, down. seeing that seems a little alarming to me, honestly. Do you think Canopy is going to... Uh, it's I already probably 10% today. I think, well, it's because the CEO stepped down and then them releasing that article. I think if they don't get their shit together and start actually making money... They lost a lot of money. If they don't start quarter. making money, yeah, if they could start their investors. Yeah. Yeah. The U.S. giant started like kicking blah, 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 blah. They bought a whole bunch of well, stuff. Constellation Brands. They got a whole Constellation bunch of... Brands is the company that owns that beer. Okay, well, anyway... Um, I'm not worried about the beer. Uh, the only beer, Dos Equis. Ah, no? Is that, no. Isn't that a Mexican beer? It is a Mexican beer. It's not bad. It's good. Not much. It's good, it's yeah. Not it's like it's easy drinking beer. It's, yeah. yeah. It's a beer Corona. After a nice hot beer. There you go. That's like a Corona. You know what happens when you drink alcohol after being super active? You drop your diastolic blood pressure, then you can pass out. Mm. <laughs> Winning. But what do we all do, Alan? I've been working my whole life. What do we do? We have a beer up. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's good. It takes your it takes it down from level ten to level four. It's like every hockey yeah, tournament. You have a beer getting undressed, you have a beer in the shower. Yeah, you just gotta be careful about passing out your blood pressure. Anyway, I just remember that from back in my kinesiology days. <laughs> we were like in <laughs> school. They taught, they taught us that in school and we we're like, oh anyway, there's a whole bunch of weird shit. Our university us. was also a dry campus, so anything about poly they never talked about. What do you mean? University out of school? No, I was just at a private university in the state. Drive campus. Oh, oh good. Well, dry, but like cannabis friendly. Well, you couldn't smoke weed. It's illegal there. Right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I lived off campus and had an on campus house. See, I think we're having issues with our mics yeah. still. Are you sure it's that one? There is no other one. Is it just. Is it's me. Yeah. I'm buzzing it up. No, the mics Why? aren't on at all, guys. You're, whatever audio you're getting is coming from the computer. No. No, no. It's kind of in and out like yes, So you're going to make my boy buzz up now. I'm not really. Yeah, I'm going to have to like. We're, I'm just asking you we're testing in the middle of podcast. This is how we roll here. Anyway. So here we go. Um, all right. So any other news aside from uh, Bruce leaving Canada? Um, I s- you said it earlier about the camp, this Calgary Stampede not allowing cannabis. Which okay, kind of funny to me. Is that, that allowed? I well, they can ban whatever they want. I think if it's on private property, they can create a bylaw. Did you know NHS opens open the clinic? Yeah, I didn't know that. Like today, yeah, it's the first one. That's cool. Hopefully they can make it affordable. You know, we were, Synergy was part of uh, making uh, I remember the UK I legal. I remember well, that. Can't talk about how it was, but I remember there was it. a specific individual that wasn't able to be seen pretty much anywhere in the world. Mm-hmm. And we agreed to see them here. I remember that day. Yeah. Uh, it was a good day. That was a good day. I was mm-hmm. here, but Dr. Aziz was here. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, so we're, we're, you know, I feel like we're, we have a little responsibility in there, which is awesome. Okay. Uh, I don't think there was too much other news that happened. 
There's a bunch of things, but I can't honestly um, remember. One thing that actually is kind of cool, too, I guess, in Manitoba and Saskatchewan, they're now legally starting to distribute, like, day delivery services for cannabis. They're mm-hmm. test running it in Manitoba and Saskatchewan right now. Yeah. Hopefully by October we can maybe see those in Ontario because that would really help the recreational market. They're, they're, I think they're not going to do anything till December. I think we know that edibles and all the other good treats are going to come out in December. Um, but, uh, anyway, I don't think there's anything else. Uh, let's <coughs> oh, let's look. Go to the uh, very top. Oh. Go down. Okay. There was one more. I this is how we do the news here, people. We do it at the moment. Oh, did you see that? Did you read that? No. You'll get it. I don't know how you'll feel about that. Tell us. What so this guy us? had a, a script for over 100 grams per day. Yeah. And they denied him from buying like 150 grams at a time. Who did that? The government. And now he went back and now they're allowing him to buy his full script. He has a hundred. What is he going to do? A hundred grams. Grams. Exactly. It's very weird. Yeah. But the government said no. You can't buy that much. And I guess he challenged it. And now they're like, yes, they went to a federal court. You can buy a hundred grams limit. One hundred fifty a day is the limit right now. But they they denied him. What the hell are you going to do with yeah, the just hey, that's, it was my Is he response? going to say, oh, I'm making tinctures and I'm doing extracts and this? But yeah. that's for shit. At the end of the day. Yep. At the end of the day, how much is a hundred grams? An ounce to get one gram of isolate. Yeah. Right. It's, it's about. Uh, let's you use a that. pound. You use a pound to get less than a quarter pound. Okay. I'm, of course. So okay. Know, so the same thing I just scale. said. It's still yeah. like a one. Right. So it's still about the same thing. Yeah. So you're going to use an ounce to get one gram. How much of that ounce of that one gram are you going to use in a single day? You're not using that whole. Grand. You're gonna in that isolate. You're not oh, using the whole one, isolate. You're using oh, a whole isolate. Tiny one gram. gram. If it's a thousand milligrams of CBD, yeah, I can easily use that. Of day. CBD, I understand. So an isolated CBD one gram, if it's equivalent to it, if it is a thousand milligrams. Easy. A thousand gra- milligrams of CBD. Uh, yeah, no, no. The and only study. So, hold the on. Studies that are in Colorado for epilepsy. Okay, oh, okay. So, okay. Hold on. It's no, it's twenty milligrams per kilogram is what they did in those studies. Okay. <laughs> so could it, it will work out to five hundred milligrams, perhaps if you weigh whatever per day. But you're not going to be using a thousand milligrams unless you weigh two hundred kilograms. That's, that's yeah, that's two, that's four hundred pounds. Yeah. yeah. So I think there's I think it's a little bit ridiculous. We haven't even gotten started yet. <laughs> this is this is what happens every freaking time we start one of these podcasts. Okay, anyway, I'm going to move on. Even the study we read here, do you, re- do you know what the average dose per day is? Yeah, 2.5 grams. Of yes. I, 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 two, so, no, of all comers. So if, of all comers. So well, let's do it this way. If that 2.5 grams was 10% cannabis, or 10% THC, do you know how many milligrams would be in that? Oh, 10%. Is 100 milligrams per gram. Yeah. Divided so 2.5. 100 milligrams per gram, and so that's 200 milligrams of THC. Divided that by 10%. No, it would it's be not, 250 milligrams. Yeah, of I, the ingesting it. At 2.5 grams, at 10% is 250 milligrams. They're not yeah. ingest. If they're ingesting like that so whole thing, the bioavailability of that is only is only 30 on percent. So if they're, they're testing on one gram, you get that. 10%. I fucking taught you the bioavailability math. I'm not doing bioavailability. You are. I'm doing conversion. You're doing conversion. I'm doing conversion of percentages. <laughs> yes, I understand what you're doing. Thanks. Not in your body. Just the bud. So if you have one <laughs> gram of bud. Cut it. Yes, if you have if one gram of bud and it's 10%, ten percent, that's a hundred milligrams. Yes, so because that's red point five my a day. That's two hundred and fifty <laughs> milligrams a day. That's not a thousand milligrams. No, that's not. So you said that's THC. We were talking about CBD. <laughs> the I was just asking if you read that. Smoking too. The, no, the bioavailability is 10% on smoking. The bioavailability on ingesting cannabis is about 30%, and vaporizing is about 50%. From what form, though? All, like I said, so all those forms. So it doesn't matter how processed it is. Yeah, have, yeah. And the bioavailability is the bioavailability. Now, of course, there are certain things like ingesting cannabis. It's super variable. When I say 30, it'll go anywhere from 10 to, to 33% or whatever it is. Yeah. There was a guy by the name of Grotenheim in 2009 that did that research. Sounds official. Sounds good. Like, you know what I'm about? <laughs> yeah, no, that's, I mean, in 2012. I can totally have that wrong. Um, 
But he did uh, the uh, bioavailability equivalency studies. And all Even that. from like a nano water soluble. No, did totally different. Yeah. Totally different. Yeah. I'm talking about yeah. if, uh, water if, soluble absorption. If, so if you easier. you can get up to 80 percent bioavailability if you if you're using nanotechnology or if you're using bio like you're yeah. using the water soluble yeah. or product. But if you're just ingesting cannabis. As a bud. At, either as a bud or even if you decarboxylate it and just ingest it as an oil, if you don't make it water soluble, mm-hmm. basically, okay. mm-hmm. uh, if you make it water soluble, then you have the then you can increase the bioavailability of it. Mm-hmm. But I think Tyler's point, what he was trying to get at, which I don't disagree, it's 250 milligrams. I'm not yeah. disagreeing okay. with you that the average there, if they were using a 10 percent, is mm-hmm. 200 or. 2.5 grams per day, at least that's what their purchase order was. Yeah. You're looking at 250 milligrams per day of THC. That's not 250 grams. No. Totally fucking no. different. And if you have 1,000 grams a day, or 100, 100 sorry, 100 grams a day, that's 98.5 grams more mm-hmm. than this. Yeah, than this I study. wasn't saying that that's good. But that's anyway. what you're, okay. No. <laughs> well, now you're not. Okay. No, no, okay. I'm just saying okay. you need to take All right, shut up. <laughs> Nobody actually takes 2.5 a day. That's the problem. You're right. That's the problem. Okay, so now <laughs> people need to take more. Just All more right. Yeah. yeah, what do you have to say? I see Jay trying to say something. Well, say I'm, no, I'm, I'm just listening. Okay. <laughs> All right, how's the, uh, how's the sound? It's okay now. Not so yeah, bad. Right Don't here. touch your stuff. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Don't touch your junk. Okay, so now to our new... <laughs> Our new, what this isn't new anymore. This is the old thing again. Mm-hmm. Uh, new format. First, we're going to review an article, which we're now a <laughs> half hour in now, and um, and then we're going to talk to these guys about their product because I want to hear more about it. But everybody, feel free to interact. So last week we reviewed the benefits of cannabis using a uh, journal article that was uh, from JAMA in 2015. That was a systematic review and meta-analysis, which we now know is just a bunch of studies that we look at, put statistics together, and when you do some statistics, we call it a meta-analysis. It just quantifies some shit, um, and uh, it showed some benefit for the use of cannabis in certain uh, certain conditions, mostly in pain, a little bit in nausea vomiting. And uh, um, overall wellness was, uh, what's the shakes? That too had positive effects for MS. The tremors had positive effects. MS, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Tremors. In that study. Okay, yeah. All that good stuff. So today we're looking at the opposite end. And I think this is uh, a landmark study uh, looking at harm. Uh, it's called uh, Cannabis uh, for the Management of Pain, the Assessment of Safety Study, otherwise known as the COMPASS trial. It was done by um, Mark Ware, who's a leader, in the, a world leader when it comes to medical cannabis. He's been doing it for 20 years. Um, and uh, he did this study out of McGill. And uh, let's go through this study. So it's a harm study. And so like we evaluated the evidence in the literature last time uh, using um, specific questions to get to the bottom of it mm-hmm. for a therapy or for a meta-analysis, mm-hmm. now we have to look at how do you evaluate a study that's a harm study. Mm-hmm. So we have a whole bunch of questions once again, um, and I'll just give you the overall summary of the study, and then hopefully we can get through some of the details. I'm not going to go into as much detail as we did last time. Again, it's super complicated going through all the stats, so I'm going to try to ignore and leave out but a bunch of that shit. Last week was, like way, it was like way less focused than that sounds like, though, like that study sounds like. What do you mean? Like, is the, the, the amount oh, of questions, yes. and how big the umbrella was. For yeah, you, yeah. Right? Like, that was, you know, it's just all So, uh, this study looked at harms of, of cannabis. The overall, they're, you know, we'll just start from the beginning. beginning. So, again, once again, we have to look through the validity of the, the question or of the study. And uh, was the study clearly defined? Did they define patient groups? And uh, were they similar in all ways? Mm-hmm. That's usually how we always start off looking at studies. So the first thing, the only real way to make sure that all groups are similar uh, when you study, uh, when you when you look at a study or when you conduct a study is to randomize them. Mm-hmm. Right. Unfortunately, and fortunately, you can't randomize people in a harm study. On a prospective, mm. you can't really do an RCT on harm. Nobody's going to let you do, hey, let's look at a bunch <laughs> of smokers. <laughs> let's randomize them to smokers and not and see who dies quicker, right? You can't really do that because mm. uh, then it would be, you know, uh, yeah, that'd be unethical. 
So really, there's only a few ways to be great. Yeah. I mean, it'd be great to get rid of some of the population, but uh, you can't really randomize people to those things. So what you have to do is there's different ways to do it. Either you can put them in a prospective cohort. It has to be observational. Uh, you can't you can't randomize people. You can't randomly do that, and you can't blind them because you you, you just well it's not ethical. So there's a couple ways you can do it. The, the way that they did it in this study, I think, is probably the the way that it should be done. It's called the prospective cohort study. And what you do is you take two groups of people that one group fit the criteria for the treatment of a study drug, and in this case, it's cannabis, and then you take another group of people that don't fit the, the criteria for the study drug, well, again, being cannabis, and you compare them to, together. So they took a bunch of people that uh, met criteria and were prescribed cannabis, and then they took a bunch of people as the controls in this study. You compare the treatment group, which is the, the cannabis people, to a bunch of controls, which are the non-cannabis group, so the guys that didn't meet criteria. And in this case, that's what they did. And then you monitor them. So they monitored these people for a year to see if there was a difference between uh, between uh, any of the harms. Really, they were looking at uh, they were looking at the design of the study it wasn't to look at the benefits of cannabis, but to look at what are the side effects. And so they split the side effects into two different categories. One were severe side effects or um, um, uh, severe uh, adverse reactions is what they call them, or just like general non-severe adverse reactions. That's what they did. So the question is, was there a difference between the two study groups? They did mention at one point that there was one basic difference between the two, two people in the study group. Remember, they weren't blinded. So these are people that were, you know, came into a doctor and said, you know, I want medical cannabis. Did they fit or didn't they fit criteria? Mm -hmm. On most things, the the uh, groups were the same, but on a couple areas they were different. Most noticeably, they were different here when it came to age. The younger they were, they were more likely to be put into the uh, can the cannabis group. So the cannabis group had younger patients in it. They, you can go through the study on your own, but anyway. So were, there, were they similar? They were, but, you know, yes and no. They did, I think, the best they could. Did they adjust for it? I don't really see that they adjusted for age, for, uh, age in the study. But uh, overall, I think that um, they did the best they can with the patients that they had. So uh, then let's go on. So were they similar? Yeah, they did. Oh, also, they were supposed did they enroll the number of patients that they wanted to. Their goal was to enroll three, about 315 people in each arm. The reason why they wanted to do that uh, was, and when I say arm, arm one would be the cannabis group, and arm two would be the control group who didn't get cannabis, and then they would watch them forward, right? So the, they wanted to get 315 into each arm, and I think the reason they wanted to do that was so they can power it, or what means they can get stati find statistical differences between the groups, you have to have a large sample size. So that, I think that's what they went to uh, to uh, the ethics board with, but they didn't hit that number. They stopped the study when they actually didn't have that many patients what, in it. What is a good number? Is it 300? It all, not all depends. Yeah. You have to do like a bunch of statistics to get to which number is best. We okay. call that powering the study. Uh, and it all depends on what you want your intervals to be. So, like, for right. example, like, where do you want the truth to be? Mm -hmm. uh, if you're in a randomized controlled trial, you're looking for a p-value, so, like, a statistical significance of cause, causation, mm -hmm. and you want that to be, like, you know, less than five, within 5% 5 error. So you usually right. get a large sample. You're going to get a smaller, a right. smaller, a more precise answer. Yeah. But if you have a, four of us, and we each have, if there's five of us in this room, and we're, we're more likely to have very diverse answers, mm -hmm. you're going to get a large, you know, you're no, not going to yeah, be precise. Yeah, yeah. And the magnitude, we call the magnitude of the answer, the precision, I guess, of mm -hmm. the answer isn't going to be too mm -hmm. good. So you want more people, obviously, for different diseases. But that being said, if we know smoking causes death, I only need two people because, you know, could probably be going to die. <laughs> Whatever it is, you know. So, like, some yeah. things, if I, if I take two people and jump off with, a, like, a seven-story building, they're likely both going to die, yeah. right? Because yeah. the LD90, which means where 90% of people die, 
when jumping off things. This is oh, that's what LV90? LV90 is where 90% of people die is seven stories. So 90% of people are going to die at seven stories. The LV50 is four stories, by the way. Just if you ever wanted to know these things, that first off, so. 50% of people will die and 50% will survive jumping four stories. At least that was the literature when I was arrested in. Is that the difference between tuck and roll? Yeah. I don't know. That was like part four. Maybe it's different. Tuck and roll. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's a great question. Don't lie on your back. Not high. Not high, yeah. You probably want to be drunk. So you roll. Yeah, nice and limber, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And or high. Just bounce off. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Wear some padding. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So let's move on from that so we're not talking about it forever. Um, was the follow-up to the study sufficient? So uh, also in validity. So within the study, they, uh, so they ended up getting like a um, – just under 200 people, I think, in each arm. I can't remember exactly. I'm really good at reviewing these arms, aren't I? Um, you're, you're bang on. Am I? Yeah. Oh, there we go. They uh, Oh, so they had 234 mm-hmm. in each arm, pretty much, and 215, which were assessed mm-hmm. uh, in pretty much each arm. So they were mm-hmm. close. They were just, you know. So the question is, to follow up, did they have, did most people complete the study? They actually had, and they mentioned one of the weaknesses in their study, and I, you know, and which is good that they mentioned it because you always have to mention limitations. Is that a lot of people uh, dropped out? You had, um, I don't know, how many people dropped out? One of the reasons people were dropping 70, out was not liking the product. I was like, what are main enjoying the product? Seventy-seven people stopped the study in the cannabis arm, and uh, and. 34 people stopped what, the study. What was the office. product, though? Was it just dry cannabis? It was from, so the product they got, they said it was from Prairie Plant System, which systems, or, which has become uh, Candyman. Okay. So, so not extract, not anything. Just, just a little plant. history lesson here for people. Prairie oh, Plant sure. System, right, Prairie, Prairie Plant, whatever the hell they were called, uh, is what Health Canada used for a decade before. They were the only mm. people. They grew in Plymouth, Lawn, Manitoba, <laughs> in an old uh, mine. Abandoned mine. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Probably really good product to get from an abandoned yeah. mine. Yeah. All kinds of weird fungus and, yeah. Way too humid. Well, it was, maybe it was a cold rock quarry. I don't know. Either way, it was all probably air. shitty. Like, yeah. How would you, how would control work in a mine? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't. Well, yeah. It doesn't. in a ton of CO2. Yeah. It, it, I, I can't imagine they thought of any of that. No. They probably did, but the candy bed now is, you know, they're pretty good products. Yeah, it's not bad at all. They're so anyway. the only guys with a THCA oil. Which right, really which is weird. It's very it's, weird. It's, it's their most expensive oil. It too. probably won't do anything for you. It's like it's 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 yeah. <laughs> THC. That's the yeah. information that we have. THCA is just an it's acidic for It's not active. Mm. So you'll get, like, the benefits of having what cannabinoids do for you in right. general, like being a good uh, omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. Mm. Maybe some minerals and vitamins, but... But does that have that carries anti-inflammatory properties too? No. Well, it carries like other terpenes. Yeah, if it's right. full spectrum and you have like CBD and stuff in it, yeah. But uh, if it's THCA, your body doesn't digest it properly. It doesn't metabolize. It'll break it down. It won't break it down. Great. It will break it down. I mean, if you're ingesting it, yeah, but you it'll won't be- ever get stoned. Well, so so all cannabis in its plant form is THCA. Yes. You can heat it up. And then it removes by heating it, de- right, decarboxylates it, takes away the carboxyl group, and therefore becomes active. Yeah. Right? That's why when you smoke or vape, you get high. Right. So if you ingest the stuff, your body will cleave. It's like take, it's basically like taking the plant and eating it mm-hmm. in an oil form. Yeah. And there's there's other um, cannab- cannabinoids that are have acidic forms as well, no? All of them. All of them. Yeah. Every single one. Every one of them is in its acidic form until it's heated. They're all in a, in a, Oh, there we go again. It's totally zen. It's got the man button. I feel like I want to do yoga. It's good looking dude. Beard. I can down dog that actually. No, that's this one. Anyway, <laughs> my, wife <laughs> both, so my wife is a yoga instructor. Uh, are you better? Having a time in a new class. I do. I go to all her classes. I'm like the most supportive human. 
She just called Naz right now. Like, what is this shit? <laughs> yeah, uh, I do. I go to her stuff. Well, a lot. <laughs> yeah, I go to a lot of this stuff. Okay, so there there was loss to follow up, but there was an intention to treat. I think they didn't explicitly say it, and it's not an RCT. But what they did say is those who dropped out, they still included their their statistics. So that's good to know. Um. Do the results of the harm study fulfill some of the diagnostic tests for causation? Well, there, it's not a causation. It's only a, um, a relative risk that they're going to tell us. They're going to tell us if there's an association. and so. Uh, but they did do the best they can here. Uh, okay, moving on. Did experimental control groups retain a similar prognosis after the study started? And so what does that mean? Were the outcomes and exposures measured in the same way? They actually were. So... Um, you know, in the study when they were measuring, watching these people, by the way, they did a really good job of, and I think we should learn, look, take a look at that, um, how they followed these people up. So while they had those who used cannabis in one group and those who didn't use cannabis in the other group, they followed them up uh, in person as we normally do, the one month, three month, well, they do, we do three, six, nine, 12. They did one month, three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, but they called them at one week. Mm-hmm. And uh, they did five phone calls for the cannabis group as well. Mm-hmm. And they did it a little different in the um, in the control group. They didn't follow them up as much. So I'm assuming there was some bias in their thinking that they, you know, they would have uh, more adverse events in the cannabis group. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then was follow-up sufficiently complete? I kind of mentioned that. So what were the results of the test? This is or of the study. This is where it all sort of got a little bit. Uh, you got to get into some of the stats here, uh, or in, in the statistics. Really super interesting. Um, I think overall. So when it comes to the were to the severe adverse events, there was no difference between the cannabis group and the control group. In fact there was a higher incidence of an adverse event of a severe adverse event in the control group mm-hmm. in those who didn't use cannabis. There was a higher incidence of, uh, of, of that. And I'll tell you where, what it was exactly uh, here. I'll just read it. 28 patients in the cannabis group reported a, uh, at least one severe, um, what's an 80, what was that? Adverse event compared to 42 in the control group. And uh, that was statistically significant. So their confidence interval wasn't large, but it, did, it, it didn't cross one. So there was a statistical, uh, statistically significant difference. Um, in fact, there was a, uh, a relative risk of, of those who didn't use cannabis of 1.5. So they had 1.5 times, we could say, the, the risk of, uh, of having a severe adverse event if you weren't using cannabis. What, what constitutes study. a severe adverse event? Great question. So those were, uh, so we have to go look at how they define severe adverse events. Because that means that's 20% of all the people that were doing the study got that. So surgical and medical procedures, gastrointestinal disorders, like, um, so really bad things. So like uh, we're talking about having to have surgery, oh, uh, death, stroke, seizure, um nervous system disorder, respiratory system, severe infection, uh, vascular disorders, psychiatric disorders that were bad. Like anxiety. Like, non-anxiety wouldn't be included. That would be in the non-severe. Okay. So they had both severe, they had both definitions of what a severe adverse event was yeah. and a non-severe adverse okay. event. So but that's a lot of people for something that crazy though. No. That's it's not so it was nineteen percent versus thirteen percent versus nineteen percent. Yeah. So it's I mean it's still high. None of them died, of course. Yeah. But uh, there was a uh, there 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 were severe side effects. Actually, two people did die. Two people died in the control group, not in the cannabis group. Yeah. Um, but it can also be remembered. We have to take this with a grain of salt or sand or whatever. Salt, yeah. <laughs> Why? Because they weren't blinded, right? right. So the people that were uh, um, the people that were included in the control group or non-control group was all up to the physician, right? So maybe they were more the people that weren't given cannabis were yeah. severe opioid, you know, addicts, right. or people with a lot of other problems that didn't fit because there were there were. Um, uh, exclusion criteria. Okay. okay. So they weren't going to give cannabis to anybody that was over 18 could be in, included, yeah. but people with severe psychiatric disorders or alcohol right. or comorbidities that weren't, in, you know, were bad, 
they weren't included. They weren't allowed to be in the cannabis arm, so they were excluded. But you could be in prescription meds or anything. You could be, yes. They didn't change it. It's real life data, so you won't change any of the uh, anything somebody is on. You're not going to stop them from all their meds. So most people were on opioids and benzodiazepines. Mm-hmm. In the control arm, right? So uh, they did have more significant uh, side, severe side effects. But that would account for the higher percentage of the people being having the severe side it, effects. It right? could be. Yeah. I don't know. We don't know what would account for it. What I know is that those who were in the uh, – but they also – they do adjust for those things, right? Okay. So you do try to put the similar people into both groups. Right. Um and they do adjust for those things. And then they do tell us what the confidence intervals are. So they do statistical significance to see if there was uh, a, a difference between the two groups. And that's, that's, how, you, that's how you compare the two groups. You can't, you can't state causality, but you can state a link. Mm-hmm. So um, those who were in the, those in the cannabis arm had less severe side effects than those in the control arm. That was the primary outcome. The other, pri- the other primary outcome that they were looking for in this case, in this study, was, and that's a good thing, by the way. So we, you know, and I think this was the, like a landmark study looking at severe side effects. Mm. Now, they only followed them for one year. I actually think that's a good time to follow somebody for severe side effects. Um, but, um, but still, you need, like, we don't have 20-year data yet. Yeah. You know, although I have thousands of your data, and, like, people's, people are dying. Yeah. You know what I mean? Is there anything long-term at all? Well, I mean, time? we have 5,000 years of cannabis use and people not dying. So, like, if, yeah, if yeah. you know, 40% of a population uses cannabis and you know, on a regular basis, and, and there was a lot of deaths, we'd be, there'd be a we'd lot be more out front. They specified all that, you know, percentage of people who got off opioids after using the cannabis. Not in this study. That's my study. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So one thing I noticed too is the older groups that did have two deaths were also older as well. Mm-hmm. That might also play into the study too, maybe a bit. For sure, it does. Yeah. yeah. I would agree with you. I think. Yeah. I mean, there's there's bias and confounding variables in the whole thing because you can't blind the group. So right. mm-hmm. you know, but and you know what you know. There was a couple of things. There were people in the cannabis arm were also regular users. Right. I think. So right. Did they specify on strains that were used at all, or one strain, twelve and a half percent. From uh, Candyman. Okay. They just didn't name the strain. They didn't name. Yeah. They named the cannabinoid content. So okay. Normally, like when it comes to studies, we don't name it's we don't name the um, the uh, strain. No strain. No, there's another word I'm looking for. Brand name. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. the word. We usually name the generic name, and in this case. There is no real generic name. The generic name is the percentage. Right. That's how you list it because you don't want to list somebody's proprietary thing or, right. you know, whatever. So, yeah, they use a 12.5% THC mm-hmm. is what they mentioned in the study. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I read something before about a, a trauma doctor in Canada that prescribes uh, basically just indigo strains at a low to medium dose. We found that if, you, if it's dose too high, it actually causes more adverse effects of pain. But dosing up low seems to be the most beneficial. It's a good point. So that goes to show the bimodal, we call it a bimodal distribution of cannabinoids. It's both for, you know, I don't really use terms like, we don't really use the term sativa indica anymore. But, I mean, we guess we do. I mean, we do to help people understand. Mm-hmm. But both both of them, it doesn't matter what cannabis you're using, whether it's THC, CBD, or the whole spectrum of whatever, those who use are usually use a low dose usually have less pain than those who are using a high dose. We find the same thing with opioids as well, which is really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, it's this bimodal distribution. Maybe it goes towards what we call hyperanalgesic syndrome. We definitely get it with uh, with opioids. What's, what's hyper- hyperanalgesic syndrome is where you get more pain, hyper, more okay, yeah, yeah. pain syndrome from the use of the medication. Is that your body knows it's coming in, so it just... It could be that there's downregulation, right. or which means, like, your receptors don't want to take it anymore, yeah. and you keep, and, you know, there is a little tolerance, yeah. and mm-hmm. so you have, you're using more and more, and then when you don't get it, your pain is intensified. Yeah, exactly. That's what certainly happens with opioids. Okay. Um, the pain becomes intensified because you were used to having some relief, and now you're not being relieved. The pain gets more and more and more. Or your perception. Your perception of the pain, of the pain is more. Exactly. Yeah. Um, wow, it's such a good discussion. See, it's Jesse. <laughs> John, like, what's fun? James. 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 Jesse, James. Jesse, yo. Yeah. No, but you got a man, but you can't be just a man. All right. I can put a cowboy on this. <laughs> you got a good looking beard. You got a modern day. Modern day, Jesse James. But, oh, you got a man, but too. 
Yours is getting longer. How do you play hockey with a man bun? Let my hair down. I might oh. cut a little hole in the top. Dude, <laughs> <laughs> I look like one of those friggin' um, guys from Slapshot. Oh, that's my hair's down past the play under the line. line. Be fun. That'd be fun. <laughs> we got one of guys on my team. You team you got the same hair as me too. Yeah. And we play D together every once in a while. So I've never seen the uh, the high school Minnesota high school hair team. No. Oh my god. What's that? This guy. Can you Google it. Yeah, Google it. So the Minnesota high school. Hockey hair Hall of Fame. That's <laughs> amazing. Have you seen it? No. I know a guy in high school in Minnesota. <laughs> a guy in hockey, too. He makes a video and, and dialogues. Uh, Did you find it? The Minnesota yeah. high school team skating up to the blue line when they get announced. Oh, and the guys got bullets and they're waving. Say the Minnesota, what? High school hockey hair. High, high school, school I see that on Instagram. hockey right. hair. It's right there. He does it every year. Of course. Minnesota. <laughs> you know what? Can you make, are we still yes. live on there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we go. How do we, uh, can you, how do we record this? You can't. We're not there yet. Oh, yeah, we're not there. We're not that. It's 2020. Can you, uh, come here with your camera or something? Not yet. Yeah, that's cool. Here we go. It's recording it? it over here, Ira. What's that? We're recording it over here. Oh, no, I'm looking. We're watching a we video. Oh, okay. It's funny. We always do. And North Branch got us out of the gates quick. Everybody was worried these guys didn't have a rink to play in. But I think that's just because they play at Willy Wonka's factory. (laughs) (laughs) Also came strong, reminding us that there's only a single A in hockey here. Oh, yeah. The tournament had great hair on the roll. But that shouldn't surprise anyone because it's been a pretty good year for hair. We had champions... Oh this kid. <laughs> oh, man. Even the greatest player in the world grew it out. This guy's hair was so nice, his last name is Maine. <laughs> we had the iceberg last recall. Beaver bailed on us. And a bald egg got the most likes on Instagram. That's yeah, amazing. Is that true? true? Yeah. He had his 100 million by like a lot. What do you mean? You only was only serving at Heidi Jenner's. Heidi Jenner held the record for a lot of years. The internet was like, it will never, ever be beaten. Well, that's not how it is. Put an age? It's still going strong. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Okay, so okay. we're going with this. Basically yeah. saying that the Kardashians can't win everything, so we're going to make yeah. this egg win this one. <laughs> Sorry, somebody just put an egg? Yeah, just yeah. one egg. Last year. Yeah. Where was I? Not, Not on the internet. internet. <laughs> I, they had no idea. When you just look so like a brown thing, I am. Somebody just took a brown thing. It like, like took over Reddit for quite a while. Yeah. Really? No, yeah. Here, let's put see a, how many likes it has. Put right an now. egg. Yeah, all the Instagram media. Me and Paige were sharing too for a while. So like, yeah, it was a movement. Yeah. What are the vegans think of that? <laughs> are you allowed to? You can't. Yeah. Well, yeah, we can do yeah Peter probably tried to get them taken down. And everything. <laughs> yeah, but eggs, you can't. Yeah, I know. You don't think 25 million likes right now. It's amazing. For an egg. For an egg. And that's all for the post was, was it's just an egg event. So there was just an egg. And then it cracked something and came out of it, too. I don't think it was like. Yeah, after the fact, yeah. Of, like, well, I guess an egg on its own is like pretty good. I think everybody would like that because it can either be an egg or you can you know, possibility. Barely beat like well, Kylie problem. Jenner's post of her daughter being born or whatever. Like, Eighteen million likes. What? That's crazy. You know, she got, Jenner is? Is that, I'm just you know what crazy? Who, that. She got to a billion dollars before Zuckerberg did. Think about that. Really? Kylie Jenner? That was yeah. one of the kids, yeah? Yeah. She's like yeah. the youngest one. Okay. Yeah. What makes her so famous, yo? Social, Social media. media. Okay. Social media yeah, and oh, marketing. Lip kits and all yeah. that crap. Makeup. Yeah. Kylie fashion and, yeah, fashion. If you put her name on something, it's worth a lot of money. You should do like, plus if she supports something synergy. on her, yeah. like, Men million. Well, I like the hemp beard stuff. I still use the that. Hemp beard, hemp, 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 our, my hemp it's product I have is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have any of it left. I got to make oh, some yeah. sold it all. You're so amazing, <laughs> Tyler. <laughs> all right, back to these results. Okay, so how strong was the association between exposure? I kind of mentioned that already. So uh, there's definitely for severe adverse events. There was. Um, there was no, uh, there was, there was no difference. 
Not, not to say there was no difference for minor side effects. There was an increased risk of minor side effects in the uh, in the cannabis arm, and that was statistically significant. I do have a question that I'm not going to get into, but why they use an odds ratio versus a relative risk, I'm going to skip that because that will be a little complicated, and I don't really get it either. Uh, maybe, uh, Dr. Ware, you can answer that. Um, okay, so there was a difference. What were the most common side effects? Here we go. There was actually a huge number of side effects. So a total of 818 non-serious adverse events were reported in the cannabis group. That's quite a bit for 215 people Yep. Um, over a one-year period of time. The most common adverse events were in the cannabis group were nervous system, respiratory system, um, and psychiatric disorders were significantly higher in the cannabis group. So those were the major ones. Now, this would be small things, and that included dizziness, cough, um, and anxiety. anxiety, but they all went away. But it was definitely there. Headache, nasal pharyngitis, so that's where you get, like, a sinus infection and throat infection, nausea, and dizziness. Those were the most common non-severe side effects, which were higher in the cannabis arm than the non-cannabis arm in the study. So the question then becomes, I mean, we could go into how precise these results were. Precision is how close are we to the real answer of the study. If we go through it, to be honest, they did a confidence interval. The confidence intervals were statistically significant. Uh, did they need a larger sample size? Of course, they could have used a larger sample size. Uh, I don't know if they used all the if they used an odds ratio at some points, and they also used the relative risk. All that stuff is important to know. But the real question then becomes: now knowing that from this, there's no difference in severe side effects between the cannabis and non-cannabis, but there is an increased risk of side effects like nausea, vomiting, headache. Uh, and a little anxiety in the uh, non-severe side effect profile for cannabis users. Is it useful for my patients? Right. So real world application. Uh, so let's go to the real world application. Well, were our patients similar? Obviously, is whatever they included in the study were those the same type of people that we see or that use cannabis daily? I'm going to say yes because they show us the average person, and I think they use the average person. In the study, so I think that the you can generalize whatever happened in the study to a larger proportion. Are we going to have causality? No, we already spoke about that. But um, you know, did they? Do we normally see patients for a year? So was the follow up of the study good? I think it was. I think one year is super adequate. What do you think? I think one year is pretty solid, as long as they're seen at least three times within that year. Yeah, I agree. Like quarterly report. Mm -hmm. What do you think there, uh, Jesse James? I mean, it depends on what they're getting treated for. It's a good question. It's a good answer. Good answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fuck you. You know, listen, we're not that detail oriented. <laughs> okay. We just like to go through these studies. We don't, we don't have to, like, I just pretend. Yeah. All right? We don't put this jacket on if people believe me. I didn't even wear a short still again. With, uh, you know, Minnesota hair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You, you you still play hockey? No, I need to. Though. That's why I was I was, I was lining Do up. You live guy. in Mississauga? No. I mean, we might need a guy tonight in Mississauga. I'll play hockey. There we go. Do you have equipment? <laughs> yeah, I do. Do you actually want to play hockey? I'm not tonight. There's I think I like play. Two weeks he's out. I think I think we play. So you don't want me. I'm pretty aggressive. Have you heard the stories of my team? Yeah, we did. We're pretty aggressive. I'm kidding. I'm not, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Can I play it like I play rugby? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Allowed, you're allowed, in our league, you're allowed to hit guys into the boards as long as you don't take, like, five steps. Ooh, yeah. So, like, you can't run people, but you can. No charging. Someone trying to go wide on you, wide. you're allowed to get in front of them and push them over. But you can take five steps. So, I take my if, if, you're, run if, you're this guy here, if you're right there and you're coming down, I can't go like this and hit you. You can glide so I can into go him, like yeah. this. And I like more people. Down. Like I, mm -hmm. so personally, on mm -hmm. a personal note, okay. I, you know, I'm I'm all for violence. There, you yeah. know what I mean. Like I'm all for, I play rugby, but not mm -hmm. violence. I'm controlled hitting. Yeah, I, I like contact sports. You know, because um, I'm built for contact sports. <laughs> that being said, I'm not for violence in hockey. Yeah. Well, yeah. Now, if it does happen. Well, because the purpose of the sport is to call it's, it's, it's perception, no, because it's getting, different. getting we don't, I don't get into a fight with some. Rugby's actually one of the, like, 
How well, is this violence this way? I know, but it's the highest the, in concussions, the, the too, though, right? The <laughs> the the is to prevent uh, injury from violence. Okay, yeah. so I get that. That's the argument for everybody carrying a gun. No, it's no, but no, 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 no. I mean, the difference is. If you don't have anyone is, stopping people from like hacking you, slashing you, then there's going to be. Well, yeah, if someone just comes and like smokes you on the ice, you're not going to do that again. You're going to think again about yeah. you know, But you also have a wreck that's going to toss you out of the Yeah, game. but they miss a lot of stuff. You miss a lot. Often yeah, more than not, especially in beer league. Yeah. Refs know other people on the team. They fuck around with you. Yeah, it's not cool. Yeah. And the repercussions of getting kicked out of the game versus getting your head punched in by yeah. a beer man. Yeah. yeah. The and the other the other thing is let's say even at, at the NHL level the suspension yeah, talk louder. the suspension for somebody taking out the best player on another the team who showed up late. Yeah. 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 <laughs> is is small potatoes compared to that player being taken out for x amount of time, right? A great yeah. example of this right now is Kadri who was just traded that stupid thing yeah. in the, right. in the right. Yeah. if yeah. he had to drop his gloves and grab them he would not have been suspended. Yeah. Because he left his gloves on he got suspended. <laughs> Because you're going to injure somebody more that way. You're going to injure someone more with sticks and gloves than actually punching them. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Yeah, you can control weight and force with a stick. To like the worst injuries have it. always been checks from behind. Like, right, like McCarty. Yeah. Like, uh, was, her, if he um, had yeah. just dropped his gloves and tried to fight him, he probably would have got a penalty and an instigator. And that's it. Okay. Back to the study. Yeah, it's almost done. <laughs> we're all, we're going to be here till five. We didn't. Well, we didn't start on time. We started twenty minutes later. So we got our half hour with them still. Okay, we're, don't worry about it. We started a little late, like thirty minutes late, and then you went off on your tangent. All right. So finally, um, are they, we spoke about that stuff. So follow up. What was the magnitude of the risk? What does that actually mean? So what is so. Somebody who's using cannabis for somebody who's not using cannabis, what's the actual um, risk? What's the actual, how much are you going to save somebody by using cannabis or not using cannabis? So we call that the absolute risk reduction or the absolute risk increase for using cannabis. Honestly, they didn't put, most papers don't put it in. There's studies that you guys calculated. I certainly did not calculate it. So uh, what it is, I can't answer you. But that being said, does it apply should I stop the exposure to my people, to my patients? Do I think that there's enough evidence here to either sway me one way or another? Um, I think definitely there's a nail in the coffin. So here's the, here's the summary for me. I think there's definitely the nail in the coffin that cannabis is safe. You're not going to die from using cannabis. Mm. You're not going to have more severe side effects than those who don't use cannabis. Mm. So I do think on a risk-to-benefit ratio – the benefit outweighs the risk. But that's not to say it doesn't come with a little harm. Using cannabis in a patient population or people that are already using medications, that are using it for medical purposes, comes with a side effect profile. The side effect profile isn't damaging per se, but it can be a nuisance. Having a headache, being nauseous, being vom- like vomiting, you know, having those things can be a nuisance. Do they all go away? Absolutely. And I think that's the takeaway from this. You've got to weigh the benefits and the risks to using mm-hmm. cannabis. Uh, and by the way, this was a THC only product that they used. They did not use CBD. Mm-hmm. And we're going to get into talking about CBD now, and you're going to tell me about this stuff. But at the end of the day, looking at this study, I think it adds to the literature. And it's the first time, in my opinion, and while well, even the opinion of the study that uh, of the researchers, that cannabis was looked at on a long, on a longitudinal basis for a long period of time for one year. I think that is long, mm-hmm. and um, and I think it showed that there is no difference between those who use mm-hmm. cannabis and those who don't when it comes to severe uh, side effects or severe. Um, uh, whatever they are, AF, what did they say? Adverse. Adverse, yeah, adverse effects. I can't remember that word, so. Uh, so what does AF usually say? A-E. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's A-E, not A-F. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're so funny. All right, so that's the study, folks. I uh, hope you like it, and uh, so I think that, you know, weigh the risks and benefits of using cannabis. Let's get into our next segment. I don't know. I have nothing like. There's no, there's no button. There's no button to press here. Yeah, your theme song. I, I, I yeah. do. I want feet. I'm a fish fan. I don't know if you know fish. You might know fish. You got to hear about the band. I don't. No, you don't. Never heard of fish. The band. The band. So you heard of them? You heard of fish? Really? The band. 
No. Well, how do you know? It is a generational. Yeah, let's put it on. Let's put it on. It's not a gener- How old are you guys? I'm 28. Same age as me, born. I'm 90. I'm 91. I'm older. <laughs> 90. So yeah, we're in the same group. You don't have fish. It's crazy. The I was at a band too. Ish. They should well, They're music. like the ultimate. Jam. Are you ready? They yeah. Jam. Like they have. I want this to be my songs. intro song, but. No, hold they're on. Like, this uh, is uh, five seconds. It'll uh, it'll continue. Yeah. Well, they're like they're a great they're jam band. Yeah, they are a great jam band. For sure. This is my favorite like favorite song by them. I went to a concert. They didn't play. This is one of their biggest hits. Ready? Can you hear that? Yeah, it's a little, it's got a little sky. Yeah. 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 Like the funkier version of the Grateful Dead. Yeah, they were. I'm not going to play the whole song, but I would literally sit here and just jam up. Live, 24 hours. Yeah, they have the ish radio on Sirius XM. Yeah. They've got, like, the whole station. It's sitting like, oh, I got that. I, I would like to, but I think I have to ask their permission to use any of their Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Unless you got a live version of it, maybe. It might not be so bad. Well, let's just, you know, let's do it until they say no, because yeah. that would kind of be cool. Like, Live version would be cool. Fish looking at us, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> at least spark enough interest. I just went to Molson Amphitheater, which is now called something else. What's it called? Oh, uh, uh, Budweiser Steam. Right. Steam. You know, went from yeah. one drink to another. Yeah. Uh, and there's, I don't know, 50,000 people there. It was awesome. Yeah. I don't know if that's... Uh, there's like 30,000. 30? Yeah, it was awesome. It was great. It was a great jam session. It was great. The security, like, they were, all they could do was laugh. Like, you go to these concerts and people are, like, all crazy. Yeah. I don't think anybody knew where their seat was. Nobody really cared. They're like, yeah. oh, no, it's in there. Come on. People were like, you got, like, these old dudes in, like, in like moo moos, like that yeah, were like jumping around. It was crazy, funny, and like and like all this. And you have the security just laughing. It was like, there's no the most, way. Yeah, the most non-threatening crowd. The ever. most non-threatening crowd you'll ever see. It was awesome. Uh, okay, guys, Jay, Jesse, tell me about what's going on here. So, tell me first who you guys are. Um. What's happening? He wants to be like you're better. Oh, we're, we're uh, swapping mics. Or what do you yeah. think the issue is? That XLR is Okay. So that's on swapping things. We just get. Are we still uh, live? Oh, yeah. We should we're be yeah. 420 radio. Go oh, right. Yep. Very cool. All right. So tell me who you guys are. I just went to. I honestly, I'm drinking your your coffee at Heel, which is up on concession. And uh, you guys have a product line. You're you're ready to infuse, you know, CBD when it becomes legal. You've got some canine things going on. I really think it's really cool how you're trying to brand yourselves in the most natural sense. So uh, fire on! I want to hear about it. And, uh, I'm going to ask you some tough questions. I don't really have any tough questions. <laughs> I want to hear what you're doing. All right, start off. So my background is in human supplements and nutrition. So I used to work for a bunch of dietary supplement companies. I used to be a fitness model and spokes model for optimal nutrition. Why don't you have a man button? I, I can't. I can't. Only I can't have two of them. That's a fitness model. Guys, you need to... So, hey, hopefully we'll get some more views here. We have a fitness <laughs> yeah, model. Yeah. I, I was. Just like Tyler. I was. I was yeah. <laughs> okay. I was, I was but that... Is all. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Push up. Push up. Challenge. We have to have Tyler do something. He's got Challenge? kicked in the chest with a toe. Oh, yeah. That's right. I'll never forget. <laughs> with a toe? Oh, yeah. There's some MMA fighters on. This guy's like, yeah, I got this toe kick. What the hell is a toe kick? You just kick with your foot, man. He's like, you want to feel it? All right. And he stuck his toe underneath my ribcage oh. and, like, jerked it. And he didn't do it very hard, but you're like, if he did that hard, my ribcage would just, like, pop out of my chest. Yeah, it was not nice. straight anyway. Weird we got a toe knock, right? His oh, toe is like mutilated. Mutilated. Ninja toe. Yeah, it's crazy. Oh, it's it's super cool. cool. Your abs, your abs, abs stop. That can we uh, look? Yeah, can we look at? He's like, can, can we do? We should do an ab off. Yeah. I don't have that. <laughs> 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 a little two pointer. Two sticks. Okay, go on. Sorry. So yeah, just to go back to that. So that's why I started off with the for about five years, um, and then that's kind of how I branched off into cannabis as well, because I was exercising two or three times a day. That was my job. Um, and I got injuries, I hurt my shoulder, and eventually it kind of became difficult to keep going to the gym and doing that same thing. Were you using cannabis when you started? Not really, no. 
So like I, I did when I was a bit younger, but like I never really was heavily involved in, in soaking anyway. Um, and then yeah, training twice a day, injuries. After a photo shoot, my reward was to smoke weed and hang out. And I just realized the next day, wow, I felt like really good. I wasn't sure if it was the food or the cannabis or combining it together. So I'd go and work out, smoke a joint, work out, and I just felt amazing. So eventually I started incorporating it into my everyday workout plan and my Shoulder felt better, recovered faster, slept better at night. Do you know what cannabis you were using at that time? It was just street weed. At the time, it was, this was a while ago, so yeah, I, know. I, didn't, I did have a medical card at one point. I was getting it from Peace, Peace Naturals at the time. Did you remember that? Yeah, so I was, I was using Peace Naturals. I can't remember the exact strain I had coming to me. Mean, but, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if I remember. Oh, really? Strain wise, I used to do Pennywise, Diesel... Anyway, Dean Gold, uh, CT, CBD number one, OG Kush, Chrome, um, Rio, <laughs> uh, Rio, Rio, Rio. Somebody yeah. said I that. A lot of that. Who said that memory? By the way, just to go back to the memory thing, there was in that study there was mm-hmm. no difference in controls or or in the cannabis arm when it came to memory and cognition. Mm-hmm. In both of the arms, this is sorry, I just wanted to mention this. Cognition actually improved. Neural cognitive function improved in yeah, both yeah. arms. Which was the first, to, uh, their awareness in most studies show that cognition, neurocognition decreased with cannabis. Anyway, this is, that was just a, a side, but yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so basically, my two passions, well, my main passion at that point was dietary supplements, and then I started getting more into cannabis, and I just thought to myself, wow, it'd be really cool to. So cannabis is your passion. Combine them together and to make something very unique and cool that, you know, everyone else wasn't doing. So in addition to that, we've kind of got more into doing more eco-friendly packaging as well. So one thing I noticed when working in the supplement industry is everyone just does the exact same thing. Yeah, yeah. big plastic tubs, yeah. big big labels. You know, not really caring too much what the ingredients in the products, and just trying to you know make something that's flashy and whatever, make some marketing yeah. spin on it, and make a bunch of money off of it. Don't care if it actually works. But. Right. No, it works because you got a big jack guy to sell it. Right. He yeah. So, it, so on the inside, I, I kind of saw that happening. I'm like, one, I want to make products that are actually beneficial and do something new and different. So I saw cannabis as something really new and different that's actually beneficial for recovery and exercising. Okay. So that's kind of how that came about. And also from the dog side of things, I got a, once I got a dog, I went to PetSmart and I saw the multivitamins they're selling. I was looking at the ingredients, the cost of the product, and I was like, what is this? So I basically worked with a, a veterinary nutritionist to formulate uh, products that have actual scientific backing um, mm-hmm. that are beneficial and use natural ingredients. And then uh, Jesse came on board to help with the protein side of things and has helped with... What do you mean the protein side of things? Like so the, basically the human line, we have two different Brands, once for humans, once for dogs. Can we talk about the humans first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's go on to that. I would, I, Jesse, so why did you yeah. come into this? Thing? So, I grew up with Jay. We played uh, AE hockey. hockey together. Did you both play like, yeah, pose sure. together? We both did this model? Did all that flow then? Yeah, <laughs> they're still flowing. I was a stunt double on stage. Yeah. Is that a true story? No, it's not. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, uh, it could do, it could you shave your head? Probably work. We should go, we'll go with that next time. All right. But uh, I, I joined the team about a year and a half ago. Yep. I worked for uh, Super Packaged Goods for the last five years. Oh, okay. Uh, I saw the potential in the, the dog stuff. It's a really great product. It's, it's GMP formulated. It's top grade ingredients. It's veterinary nutrition. formulated, right? It's everything that you want to look for when you go to the store, mm-hmm. when you really have no idea what, what you need for a dog. You yeah. know, it's got those those great ingredients and, and science back ingredients. So I saw the potential. I, uh, I joined the team part-time, and then I've been full-time into it for about uh, eight months now. So I want to talk about the, the dog stuff, too, but first I want to go back to this protein. Yeah. Um, so most people, when you or most... Uh, Brands, like you said, are are shitty. They use uh, one; they don't do any third party testing on their product, and they also just use you know generic stuff. And actually, a lot of them don't even tell you what's inside it. A lot of them tell you it's proprietary information inside it, and it takes, tastes super um, uh, medical or like synthetic, synthetic super yeah. synthetic. So, do you use a whole bunch of synthetic so the, products, and what kind of weight or what kind of powder? Protein? Are you using? I, thanks, asshole. I can, <laughs> I, 
<laughs> I'm not, okay, what kind of plants? What kind of plants? Yeah, what are you using? Pumpkin seeds. Okay, so <laughs> yes, even this high in protein. <laughs> right. So we're talking right. guys. So we're right. They were I'm literally right. asking a question. <laughs> it's in your hand. Okay, but I want to know what they're using it. Why is it going to be a bad thing? Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're, 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 you're fired again. So yeah, you're, you're right about the synthetic ingredients and. and in the industry itself, there's a lot of fillers and, and things they can do to spike the actual protein content that's being, being put into your product. So a lot of companies actually got caught so maybe three or four years ago now um, spiking with glycine and amino acids because of the nitrogen testing for the protein. It came up as protein when it was actually just amino acids. Right. A lot of companies got caught doing that with their whey proteins. Everybody's throwing amino acids. Into yeah, and then also just adding in different fillers into their proteins to make it cheaper. Um, and also, when I worked in that world, I just saw the amount of people who were coming to Expo saying, I actually can't consume your product anymore because it hurts my stomach too much. Most products hurt my stomach when I, when I, uh, I take away. Right. So that. Isolate them. Did, did you blow? Because you had someone. I actually didn't idea. blow, to be honest. Yeah, that's very yeah, right. cool. Yeah. So our blend is, is a bit unique in one that it's a, a mixture oh, so of drink, like, pea protein. Um, have protein, cranberry protein, and pumpkin protein. We also infuse turmeric and probiotics. Oh, mm. say that again there, asshole. And, and, <laughs> and, uh, and the other cool thing is we don't use any uh, artificial sweeteners. Like most dietary supplements that you buy, they use right. for those, aspartame, something like that. We only use uh, stevia as our flavoring, so it's an all-natural um, mm. plant extract. Nice. Stevia has a weird taste, though. So it depends on how we haven't made it California. So in California, they have uh, they're pretty advanced when it comes to natural sweetening yep, yeah. formulating. So that's what we haven't made there um, in Southern California, and uh, yeah, we think it tastes really great. And all the feedback we've gotten so far is you know it tastes a lot better than most of our competitors and right. all of our competitors. And, and the main reason is one the formula flavoring, and then also the fact we don't use rice protein. So most like Vega, for example, they use rice protein. One, because it's the cheapest option. Yeah. Mm. Um, but it gives it a very gritty, chalky taste, and we didn't want that. So we mm -hmm. wanted to make sure that it tastes just as good as a whey protein, but wasn't a whey protein. So tell me about the absorption of the different proteins. So the And why somebody would go to something like this versus going to like just a traditional whey protein isolate. So the uh, pea and the hab itself, um, have all the nine essential amino acids that any uh, whey protein would have, and also the pea protein has a similar bioavailability that an egg protein would have. So it's, oh, really? It's it's as optimal as anything else in the market, but you're not consuming any gluten, dairy. So uh, it's just pure vegan. And, yeah, it's completely vegan. Yeah, you're not getting any. Uh, what's in milk? That shit that's in milk. Like lactose. 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 <laughs> Who's that shit? I know a lot about whey proteins because they're highly pasteurized and there's a lot of uh, you can't be lactose, in, lactose in it. Yep. A lot of people can't digest it properly. Yeah, so even if you're sure. taking 30 grams of protein, you're not actually getting right. all so 30 grams. That's why most people would come saying, you know, my stomach hurts. I think yeah. it's a combination of one, some of the products having fillers in them. Mm -hmm. Usually it would be like a wheat filler, who knows what they're putting in there. Mm -hmm. And also the lactose as well. That makes sense. So uh, that's kind of, and also myself, I've, I've moved away from eating meat for almost two years now. So it's something that was made also to help get pro enough protein in your diet when you're yep. able to, you know, get that from resources. And so you've made this a water soluble source. So yeah, that makes it, we made, we made sure I made it taste good, not only just water, but milk too. So like a, like a plant-based milk, obviously, yeah. so you like a almond milk, oat milk, milk, coconut milk. You guys use oat milk at heel, which is Yeah, awesome. oat milk is uh, probably my favorite. Yeah, it actually it tastes really good. Yeah. Yeah. I, find that, I find that almond milk even bloats me a little bit. I don't know. I don't know why. It depends what kind of almond milk you're having. If it's yeah. like the flavored one or if it's the end sweet yeah. one. Yeah, it's it really I've got a gut issue. Mm. So probiotics in there would help you. Right. So pro by the way, probiotics are great. Of course, you know, kombucha okay for you. If you've got, it's still pro-inflammatory. By the way, like if you have a gut problem, you don't want to be drinking too much kombucha because it can cause an overgrowth. Of flavor sure, just some moderation. Moderation. Like, yeah. Drink anything. Right? Probiotics are still really 250 good. mils a day. Don't drink a full cup. Yeah. Is it, uh, like a cup's 500 drink. mils, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, don't, don't drink like a full cup. No. That will make like for at least for me, it makes me like I have crazy diarrhea. 
<laughs> I love Tyler. Yeah. This is why I love him. He's like, no filter. I'll say the truth. Well, you don't have to. It's not diary, swearing. It's not crazy a... diary. I didn't swear. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just ruined another one. Yeah. Yeah. You just ruined one more, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Confusing everybody. Don't just abuse it. Yeah, now you get an extra. You get an extra. An extra swear. I'm going to work it. Okay, you work it. So, what's your goal? What's the goal? So, what are the different products you have? I see that. Like, so, And why are you. Are you cur- so. Infusing CBD currently is illegal right. in Canada. Um, one, first, why do you want to infuse CBD into that? Uh, what, what is the goal? Is the goal to help with recovery, to do both together? Recovery, inflammation, and just the overall wellness product. So we also have a kombucha powder. Okay. So this powder is essentially just a, a wellness product. Let me have a look at that. Um, and it's, so it's, it's dry kombucha? Yeah, so it's freeze-dried kombucha powder. What's the name of that bacteria? Uh, oh, I I know what you're talking from kombucha. About. The skin thing you remove. The skin. But the kombucha is the like there's an actual live yeah. bacteria. Yeah, yeah. What is it's What's that the skin? It's the, it's the skin that you take out. I'm sure, everybody on Google right now is wrong. Right. That thing. Is I know how it's spelled. I just don't want to say it wrong. What how it's spelled? Scoby. Now you go. I was in the same boat. Scoby. I don't want to say it wrong. Scoby. Yeah, it's okay. Um. Oh. Yeah, uh, hold on. We got to cut off there a second. Here, come, but come here. In all reality, Instagram and a lot of Twitter, all those platforms are not working today. And you know, I have a funny it's feeling it's to do with Trump's parade tomorrow. <laughs> they're, they're, they're pushing a major update, I'm sure. Are they? I don't want to well, see. usually a lot of the internet is not working today, apparently. Yeah. And tomorrow's kind of Trump's massive military parade. He's doing like, like so a Chinese a good one? Thing or, or I don't know, but I think it's tied together. I'm a conspiracy dude. Right? <laughs> what do you mean? You think that Trump? Well, okay, well, to, for people to start protests and stuff, they organize, and they usually organize over social media. So if you take social media away from it, it's a lot harder for them to organize a protest. Oh, so you think that Trump? He'll stop access to that, so they can stop them from coming. To spoke protest. to uh, whoever owns. But that's saying, but that's oh, that's saying that Trump has. We'll shut you down if you don't do this. Yeah, but the government doesn't have the power to shut them down. I wonder, though, because I think, like, oh. Zuckerberg's pretty liberal, so I don't know if you'd be... Oh, like, Silicon Valley is insanely liberal. Yeah, it's all down to help Trump out. I don't know. I can we'll see. Wrong. Yeah. I don't know about that either. Well, yeah. if he says, hey, maybe we'll make some more privacy laws a little easier for you. Well, they're going to break them up. They're, 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 getting, they're talking about breaking I'm Facebook up. I'm totally sure. pulling stuff out of my ass Who's, right now. Who wants to break up Facebook? Oh, the, gov- the government does. Because of antitrust laws, they should have never been able to buy Instagram. They shouldn't have been able to buy WhatsApp. Like, antitrust laws are yeah. pretty clear on yeah. you know, that not being able to monopolize an entire industry like that. Yes. Right. And they have. They've just bought, they buy on average 10 companies a week. Who? Facebook. Google's up there too. Yeah, they want Google's to buy even higher. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, Google, come this way. Get back on the oh, body. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'll sell it for you. We never get on. We're we're like the consummate off-topic people. We all yeah. maybe they'll buy uh, can't body talk. natural. Let's get it on. Um, I actually thing. want to come buy some of this stuff. How much is it? So at our store, without infusion. When you say without infusion, so can we talk about what so you the mean? Canadian market, we don't have any CBD or any cannabis-related products mm-hmm. used into our products. So outside of Canada and the U.S. market, we'll be using uh, hemp CBD, mm-hmm. and same with uh, in the European. You'll just be using hemp. Yeah. Oh, in the U.S., you'll use hemp CBD in Canada because you can do that. Right. Canada, you can't even use hemp CBD. Right. You can just we'll, use hemp. Right. So we're using like hemp industrial, powder, industrial hemp protein powder without any. You know, right. compounds in it. It's not from seed, is it? It's from actual plant. The uh, right now, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So where? What is it from right now? What's so, your goal? Where are you now, and what's your goal? So basically, in the Canadian marketplace, we have Heal as a, a wellness center where we can educate people about cannabis, um, utilizing you know events and stuff. That people like yourself come in and, and speak to people. Is that what you want to do with Heal? I think that's the idea in the long term, but right now we're more so a nutrition center. He's about to fall asleep. <laughs> what is, is it? Like, yeah, it's a nutrition center, but we also want it to be a place where people can come and, and learn and have events. So what is event a nutrition center? center? Basically, you come, we have smoothie bowls, we have you know smoothies, we have our protein powders. So it's a cafe. It's a cafe. But you're using bar. a new word. 
Yeah, it's a health bar. It's and like it's the legacy it's market. It's a health mm-hmm. bar, education center. We it's have a nutrition center. We, we mm-hmm. don't have the, the education right. portion uh, up and going right now, but it's something that we want to get more involved in. Like sure. speaking to people like yourself about maybe coming in on night and talking to people about sure. different, different uh, cannabinoids and, and stuff like that. Um, it also is dog friendly too. So because we have mm-hmm. our saw that, that's smart as shit. So we just yeah. built a, a dog lounge in the back. We do a patio, a dog lounge. We have actually have a dog park with a little dog run we fenced in. So you can come at the nutrition center. Yeah, exactly. So you can that's come, smart. have a coffee, have a smoothie, have a smoothie bowl, hang out with your dog, maybe learn about mm-hmm. if you're there, learn the hydrate. Yeah. 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 And also yeah. have a protein shake. You know, just have something healthy and just hang out, and relax. Is kind of the, the idea with that location. You should also go in Georgetown. Yeah, just do really well. What a nutrition center? Hippy dippy moms, <laughs> and they all have dogs. They all have dogs, and they all. Have, I, no, I just want to. I, I, I just want to go to the nutrition center <laughs> so that I can have a protein bowl. <laughs> Otherwise known as a cafe. Start. Yeah. <laughs> all this, the fit community in Georgetown oh, cool. is freaking blowing up. You guys are miles ahead of her. Yeah. So that's the idea for Canada. In the U.S., like I said, I missed all that. We're going to be doing. In, we're going to be doing uh, CBD infused protein powders and kombucha. We also have a greens product. It's an energy green. So we have a green coffee bean and yerba mate infused okay. with a greens powder. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Same thing. Naturally flavored. We're going to be infusing CBD. You guys are going to be taking on isogenics soon. Yeah. We'll we'll, we'll take them over no problem, man. You know, their formulas are. Yeah. Okay. What do you? What, what's that? Oh, my back is super itchy. Can you itch my back? Sure. Scratch. It's like <laughs> over on my shoulder. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> and then also uh, the European market too. So all these products, so we have really not great brands uh, that are going to be focused on the U.S. legal marketplace like really? Switzerland with CBD. We were there right. a couple weeks ago. Clint, I uh, I tagged you in the post today. Hopefully uh, you're listening. You bastard! My hair is way better than you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we actually randomly saw him on the street in Hamilton. I like walked by. I'm like, that's Clint Young. I go say hi to him. So this is maybe this is in the winter time. I never met him before. So this and I introduced ourselves. Like, yeah, and he's like, yeah, I'm actually just about to move to Switzerland or, yeah. or Thailand. 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 He's like, this game is I have a, a, that place. Yeah, I have a, a business venture in Switzerland. He's telling me about it. So I'm like, okay. I saw the ICBC event coming up, so I went out there. And then uh, did you go to ICBC? Yeah, I went there. It was, it was quite cool. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Zurich is uh, an awesome spot now. I wish I could. Uh, I could live yeah. there. The, the, something happened going on. There's, there's a lot of happening. Yeah. There aren't many people in, in the space doing. It's weird. It's hard to differentiate yourself mm-hmm. when you're in this protein space or in the nutritional supplement space, like or nutraceuticals in general, because right. it's so saturated. Yeah. But somehow you manage to do that. You should go on Dragon's Day. Yeah, people always say that all the time, but I think it's just because I, I worked in that world for so long, and just, you know, I, I just, you know, saw, market. I saw what everyone was doing, copying each other, doing the same thing, so I wanted to try and come up with a different angle, that being plastic-free and eco-friendly, and then just formulas mm-hmm. that are, you know, high quality and natural. Mm-hmm. I think that's a great, uh, you guys are in the right space for what you're doing. I love the idea. Do you list all your ingredients? Yes, they're all on the back. So you actually list them. It's not like, here's my proprietor. You don't have any blends. Really? I like that. I think that's really important. Yeah, you ever, do you, are you going to get like have third-party testing? Yeah, so with it? The, the manufacturer we have is a GMP-approved manufacturer in California. Yeah. They'll do the third-party tests as well, and we'll outsource as well. As so is your point of educating people on cannabis for eventually to sell the brand? Like, what's your goal when it could, like, are you trying to become sort of an ecosphere, an ecosystem, or, uh, you know, what's, what is the vision? What's your vision? More so, what is your vision? More so a community center where people who are just interested in learning about cannabis in general can come, have a coffee, hang out, and just and learn. Like, I think there maybe needs to be more information out there with what's going on. Uh, and people kind of want to be uh, a spot where we can help with that. Whether that's through our products, we, we won't ever be selling any cannabis these products in heal on concession, but we want to be somewhere where we can, you can go and learn about it. And, so, and you won't do that because, you know, it's, oh, today we left something. Oh, Canada, it, it, or Health Canada posted that they're going to be taking applications for the next lottery. Right. Okay. They're opening up 50 new I stores. Yeah, I got that today sent to me. Um, is that something you guys are thinking about? We go back and forth on it, yeah. I think we'll probably 
put our name in the hat and get the first round. See, see what so I mean. you need. Yeah, yeah, right? right? You get a license, it's like a golden ticket. But yeah, yeah, it's not a bad idea. I think we're more focused on being brands as compared to being a retailer, but if we were to get a spot, I don't think it would hurt. Well, they probably you have to be used Sure of that. 60% involved yeah. in it, you can sell the rest of their No, you can't. They, you have to be fully involved. The, the LP can't have more than 10%. Yeah. Or whoever buys it from you, you have to keep your own ticket right. at the end of the day. I think, I think having the product, the brand, is the way to go. I think you have a really good brand that you. Uh, Right, so you should do something. Yeah, so the the goal with I'm gonna do something with my brain. It just drives me mad. <laughs> yeah, you, sure, you know you're you know you're you know what you're doing. <laughs> I know medicine. That's funny. Yeah, but I mean so like the beer brain. You, you guys, yeah. Hey, you keep your mouth shut. <laughs> something that uh, something in Canada that we're really interested in doing and actually looking for is partnership with a licensed producer. Yeah, we don't have uh, a license to distribute the product, so we're looking for that partnership. And that was a really a, a stepping stone into creating Heal, which was the community center, the education center. You know, we, we don't want to just be a brand. We want to be a collective of people that go after the mm-hmm. one ultimate goal, right? And that's nutritional products, educated customers. There are some really cool and health-minded um, and driven licensed producers that will I'll talk to you about offline. One that just literally just came to my head. It was a good friend of mine from the West. So I'm going to, I'll make that introduction because they, uh, they're, they're pretty cool. Um, that, awesome. Yeah. Just thought of it. I, I have a couple in mind for you, but actually they, I think they'll be a good fit for you because that's what they want to do. And the man bun works. <laughs> uh, I think got a bunch of pictures of people with man buns. Oh yeah. the Zen bun. Part of the industry, <laughs> man. <laughs> you gotta have one. And if you're an exec, you gotta wear a t-shirt, and a jacket. Yeah. 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 I got it. I got it. Or a doctor. I just wear a t-shirt and a jacket. <laughs> makes it feel like uh, no one's going on. Um, all right. That sounds pretty cool, guys. You've got a lot going on. About the dog CBD stuff. Where's the evidence? Where do you guys find the evidence for this dog CBD business? So we, I'm an evidence-based guy. Yeah. yeah. So we do We do have a connection um, to in Europe. They have a, one of the, not recycled really support, not one of the first, but they do have a clinical study that proves the benefit of CBD. The first clinical study. Yeah. So they, it's, a, it's, a the university of Prague. it's a double blind study with scientists from the university that have proven. What does double blind mean? You exactly. Not. People say double blind all bullshit. No, it's not. They, they maybe they have. I'd like to see the study. I'm sure I can find it for you, but they have a formula that they... They, they blinded the dogs? <laughs> I, I, <laughs> apparently, but yeah, they, apparently uh, this formula... Has benefits towards dogs. I studied it for years, and has benefit for inflammation and anxiety. Really? Yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of people. Why did you take that out? Because he was loose, and I'm trying to figure out why. Oh, maybe just turn it. No, no. Like this cord inside is loose, but I don't think anybody's. Oh, okay. I need to like, uh, okay. so we'll I'll get a new one. Um, I definitely seen studies too on epilepsy too uh, for dogs. For dogs, there's a lot of those. I around. agree. Uh, I think that I've seen like a bunch of this stuff coming out. I'm just not sure. I I don't know. I have a dog. Everybody I hear seems to be doing really well with C- the dogs are doing really well with CBD. Like they're walking again, they're doing all this stuff. And I'm not a veterinarian, so I have no idea when it comes to animals. But uh, I'd like to definitely see it happen. I don't know why. When do you think Health Canada is going to start approving? Is it Health Canada that regulates dogs? Yeah, so there's the Veterinary Health Product Association that we work with right now with our uh, supplements. Okay. And they have what supplements do you have for dogs? So we have a, a raw uh, multivitamin. So if you feed it on raw, a raw food, it completely balances it like it would be a kibble. So you just add this multivitamin powder, and it balances it to the American Animal Food Control Organization. That's really cool. Yeah, so the problem with raw food is that it only usually has, you know, a bit of spinach, carrots, or whatever. But your dog's going to be deficient in a bunch of different... Um, mo- uh, I thought with like, raw food, like you could give them a bunch of meat. That's meat. Raw. Right. So this, if you're eating a prey model diet, which is meat and bone, this will completely balance it. Oh, really? Actually, we have that. We have one article right. called Muscle Plus, and it's basically like Gatorade for your dog. So you get on a day like this where it's, you know, 28, 30 degrees out, you want to go for a run with your dog. 
has electrolytes, amino acids, vitamins, and basically what? it rehydrates them. Dude, I think that's your market. I so, need that. So we have that. And that's like the market. My the animals, lays down there are more animals. people. Right. You will be mm-hmm. Kylie Jenner. Yeah, so <laughs> it's like more yeah. people like their dogs than they like people. Right, yeah. so we, we have a bunch of different formulas. They're all very nutritious formulated. They all have scientific back into them. Um, are you looking for investors? Uh, at the moment, no, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Strategic, strategic partners, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Partners, but um, yeah, not so much on that. On that side of things, too, I think we're going to focus more so without CBD on the dog stuff in, in the meantime until, you know, there's maybe more scientific evidence proving the benefits of having CBD added to it. In the meantime, just sell our treats with nutritional hemp, you know, have protein powder, hemp seeds, um, and then different, you know, nutrients that have, you know, proven benefits to them. Um, and kind of wait and see what happens. So, what are you looking for in the future? With you don't need you don't need funding. No, You're so funded up in Canada. We're looking for a, an LP, a partnership with an LP where we can. Folks who's listening, yeah, and we'll get you an LP. That's I don't think that's even a problem. That's the for me that's the easy part. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think for us that that's where we are. But you I mean, I, there, I'm sure whoever's listening is got, there's probably mm-hmm. LPs ready to go. This is a really awesome. Seems like a really cool product. I've never tried it. I tried your whey protein today, or not your whey, uh, sorry, whey your plant protein. Yeah. That with oat milk, it was yeah. actually pretty good. So it's cookies and cream. Your uh, straw fell apart on me within three seconds. Yeah, we got paper straws. But that's good. We have two, do it. We have two options. One's a paper straw, and people who don't like the paper, we have a uh, corn-based plastic. Uh, that's good. So it's biodegradable. Well, I'm not sure how many years it takes to biodegrade. Eighteen months. Eighteen months. That's yeah. still pretty good. It's better than yeah. ever. Yeah. It's better than four hundred years. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we're, we're definitely trying to eliminate all the plastic. Like we still have plastic in these containers, but they're going to be switching over in the next month to uh, cardboard base. Even our mm-hmm. even our uh, scoops here. They made a wee when straw. you open them up, it's a uh, biodegradable wee straw. That's so cool. Yeah. Mm. Like, but it, that's so cool. It feels and looks like plastic. It does feel it. Like. Really so you can do the same thing with hemp. Um, yeah. We'll probably do, we've talked about that. We're doing hemp scoops already, but uh, we couldn't find anyone to put the molds. But yeah, uh, it's hard right to now, talk about the wheat straw. I want to do, uh, I'm, anyway, I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you do that. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, but I think uh, re- renewable plastics are the. Are the future good biodegradable plastics? Well, guys, that was awesome. Um, this looks like a really awesome product. Uh, I've never tried it, so I mean, I or I just tried it today, but I'd have to, I'd like to learn more about it, anyways. Um, and I think there's a whole bunch that can be done eventually infusing CBD into a uh, how does CBD interact with protein with the protein based on what they're basically opposites one's a fat, and one's a, a water. So what we're planning to do with the um, CBD itself is to either micro-encapsulate it or, or bind it to a sugar to help with the absorption with the protein. Um, so yeah, or just get a protein that can drag it across. Yeah, with the fat maybe. Yeah, maybe that's where you come in. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, so that's mm-hmm. where we're we're uh, still we're still it's working on that. With uh, we're doing it in the U.S., so we have a manufacturer um, making our proteins. We got a guy. I got a guy who knows what he's doing. Yeah, he so he does, that. I think the micro encapsulated or nano emulsified um, broad spectrum or full spectrum uh, product is kind of what we're gearing towards infusing. Bioavailability needs to be high. Yeah, we want it to be you know like 80 percent or whatever. So. Oh, he just figured it out. Read the button. <laughs> got it. What did you figure out, Tyler? No, I just think I just put something together of why someone called me today out of the blue. <laughs> to do with this. Uh, see, there you go. Yeah. This is what we do here. All right, everybody. I think we've uh, we've we've beat this horse, yeah. but we don't beat horses. We pet them. Yeah. We yeah, we're just we're pet friendly. We are pet friendly. I don't know why I said that, but I was thinking of Tyler actually. You you beat Tyler. <laughs> beat Tyler with a hockey skate. Bring it on. And then yeah. Bring it on. Look at him go. Bring it on. I'm going to kill you. Yeah. you on the ice, man. Yeah. Have fun with me on the ice. Yeah. Have fun with you on the ice. Have fun with you on the ice. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because I'm Mr. T. I'm going to kill you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 On on the skates. On the skates. Okay, everybody. Um. I think we're good for now. I I think we we 
this has been a great episode. Yeah. And uh, Lucas, you're next to be on the chopping block. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know that it's Wednesday, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what the fuck happened to you today? I was. I told you I was in an interview that went way later than. Oh, yeah, oh, I you're, know. You're in an interview. Okay, that makes sense. For another podcast. For <laughs> no, not in. <laughs> <Jesus. laughs> yeah. Anyway, Al, how are you? I'm fine, buddy. What Al are you up asleep. to? No, I'm not. I'm sitting. <laughs> I'm working. Al, uh, we're. I think we're done. Anything you want to add? I. I, I I've been playing with 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 cannabis with with my old guy there before he died. I got me three years, so you know it it works, and uh, you just have to find the right, find the right combination of things, right? All right, I don't know what you're talking. Cannabis works. I'll get dogs. Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, cannabis does work for dogs. Oh, you're yeah, damn I, right I, it that's does. Cool. I well, you've tried it for your. I've seen good things with my mom's dog. I've never tried it. My aunt's like a vet. Sort of. Yeah. I'm there. She will I'm rather that people point. to do it, but she's not. For arthritis too. I'm at my point. I'm at that point. Okay, last couple things I got to uh, I got to um, say here. Plug. Check out. Yeah. Uh, check out. We've got yoga at uh, Synergy Health Services. Check it out with tonight at six. Why don't you plug? My mic is not plugged in. Here, talk on mics. I don't know. <laughs> All right, yo, we got yoga at the Synergy Burlington location tonight. Me, right? 20 bucks. If you have limited mobility, it does not matter. You can be taught from a chair. It's a very small and intimate class. So you really get to know the teacher, and she's great. So check it out. That's tonight at 6 in our Burlington location. Is it usual? What days do we usually do it? Yeah, today's one of the days we usually do it. Wednesday is like, like another. I don't know the other day. It's twice a week. <laughs> We're <laughs> awesome <laughs> about plugging shit. Um, oh, jeez. If you go tonight, you can find out the answer to that question. Okay. Other things that we are doing now, buy well. Check out their site. Sign up. Uh, the only LP we still have is Weed and D, but the prices are getting better and the savings are getting better every day. So definitely check that out. Um, that's about it. Could be a class coming in the fall. And, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of LPs in the works. They'll be up in the next week or two. Um... By what I forgot to mention, you guys should check it out. We have a, oh, aside from just doing the cannabis coverage, we do ca- cannabis coverage. So anybody wants coverage for their cannabis, check out uh, buywell.com forward slash care because it's uh, buywell care is our cannabis coverage that you can get for your cannabis. Uh, but we also have an e-commerce platform, health and wellness e-wellness yeah. platform. And that may be good to sell on that platform. Oh, check it out, guys. Buy well. Uh, check mm-hmm. out Instagram, Dr. Ira Price, Synergy mm-hmm. Health Services. Don't forget to listen to the higher estate on all your usual whatever the hell you listen to. Podcast. I've had enough of talking today. <laughs> I've done that talking. is the first. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> That's why <laughs> right. I'm okay. good. Cool. 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 Did you mean that for Slavic? Is that what Slavic is? Yeah, why not? Trying to get on the Slice Radio website. Sounds like a cool website. Yeah, it's alright. Oh, yeah, I might have it. You might have it. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. The opinions expressed during this show are those of the individual participants and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of their associated organizations or Lifestyle Radio.